Hello everyone, I'm the Quiet F, and this is my recap of Tales of Wedding Rings. So, without further ado, let's recap. A boy is up on a tree trying to catch a beetle when he sees a blinding light right next to him, and the surprise makes him fall. When he gets close to the beam, he sees an old man and a young girl coming out of the light, and he thinks they are aliens, but they are actually human. The girl asks for his name, and he says it's Sato, says it's an unusual name, and introduces herself as Hime no Kana. Hime says that Sato cannot tell anyone about what he just saw, and it would be better if he actually forgot all about it. In exchange, Hime will be his friend. Sato thinks that back then, he felt a strong urge he would have to protect that girl for a long, long time. Ten years later, Hime wakes Sato up and says breakfast is ready, and it looks like a feast. Hime says she woke up early because she's excited, since it's the last day of school. While admiring her beautiful features, Sato thinks that it's already been 10 years since they've become friends and she moved next door with her grandpa, because her parents don't seem to be around. He looks at the ring on her necklace and gets flustered, saying that she has changed a lot since they started high school, because she used to be more low profile. But that attitude will make her stick out even more, especially because of her blonde hair. And also, she's a princess, so she has to be strong and stand out. When Sato asks what that princess thing is about, Hime looks at him and freezes. Suddenly, she comes really close as if she was gonna kiss him, but it was only a rice bean on his face. She picks it up and eats it, and Sato's embarrassment almost blows up the house. They leave the house, say good morning to Hime's grandpa, and go to school. Hime asks Sato if his father is coming home soon, but he says he's probably coming at the end of summer break, and Hime feels a little sad for him, but he says he's used to it. He takes a look at the rings again, and remembers what Hime has said about them when they were kids. She said the rings are really important to her, and she will give one of them to the person she marries. Then, she asks Sato if he will marry her when they grow up. Back in the present, Hime catches Sato staring at the rings and says he can't have them, because they're really important to her, and she walks on laughing, while Sato thinks that's usually how childhood promises go. Then they have to run so they don't be late for school. At school, Hime brags about scoring 97 on the exam, and says a princess needs to be smart as well. A friend of Sato's complains that summer break is starting and he's all alone, and he envies Sato because he has a girlfriend to come to school with him every day, but he says they're just neighbors. His friends tell him not to be too comfortable, because when he finally decides to make a move on Hime, it might be too late, and they would definitely be with a girl as cute as her if they had one around. While his friends talk, he gets a text from Hime inviting him to the summer festival after school. She smiles at him from the front of the class, and he wonders if he can get his hopes up. In the evening, Sato meets Hime at the festival, and she wonders if her yukata had taken Sato's breath away, and when he says yes, she gets flustered and starts walking. Hime gets really excited at festivals, and she remembers the day they went there when they were kids and got lost. After that, Sato held her hand and said that this way they would never get separated from each other. He was her hero back then, and maybe he still is. They go get something to eat, and while she eats, Hime sees a shooting game tent and asks Sato to get the biggest prize for her. His shot is terrible but his luck is apparently out of this world, because he manages to hit the target anyway. While they walk through the festival, he thinks that he used to be fine with the way things were with Hime, if it meant not ruining their friendship. But now, he is not sure this is enough. They climb the mountain to see the fireworks better, and Sato is building up his courage to make a move on Hime. But when he's about to declare to her, they got distracted by the fireworks. They're both glad they could watch the fireworks together, and Hime has something to say, something she wasn't able to tell him until now. Sato thinks she is about to confess her feelings, but she actually says she is going to move away the next day. They are going back to her grandpa's homeland, which is far away, and Sato is devastated. They go back home, and Hime says she is glad for the fireworks, the festival, the plushie, everything. He asks if there is a way to change things, but she only says she has made many good memories to take with her. Then she says goodnight and closes the door before Sato has a chance to say anything. Sato can't sleep, wondering if the place Hime was going was too far away. He looks back to the past and realizes he doesn't really know anything about her. He can't even remember the day he met her. Suddenly, a blinding light appears in the forest, and Sato remembers that something really weird happened the day they met. Hime is standing next to the light beam, and Sato comes running right before she enters it, asking her not to go. She's happy he remembers, so he must understand. She's not moving, she's going to a different world because she's getting married. After all, she's a princess, and that's how it is. She says goodbye and goes to the light. Sato thinks he didn't go there just to see Hime leave, so he jumps into the light as well. He falls right into the middle of Hime's wedding. Her real name is Crystal Novati Nokanatika, Princess of Nokanatika, and she is marrying the second prince of Gisaras, Marmargias Gisaras. 
the people are surprised with his presence, and right before the kiss that would seal the wedding, the father sees him and he calls for Hime. Before they could answer any question, a huge monster breaks into the church. It was a monster from the abyss, and it was after the princess's life. That's why she was hidden in another world. Hime's grandpa faces the monster, but he gets distracted with Sato's presence and gets hit. He realizes they would need the ring of light to defeat the monster, and orders Hime to give the ring to the prince, but the monster is right in front of Sato. Hime looks at the prince and then at Sato. Then she runs toward her childhood friend and kisses him. Lights shine and the church bell rings, and both the rings on Hime's necklace appear on their fingers. The prince understands what has just happened and tosses his sword to Sato, that starts shining as soon as he wields it. He doesn't know what to do, but he lets his instincts kick in and slashes the monster in half. The effort was so hard, he passes out immediately after. He wakes up with Hime by his side, and he jumps when she says they're in the royal couple's bedroom. She reminds him they shared a kiss, and he wonders if she really loves him. She says she was supposed to marry the prince, but she doesn't even know him, and she wanted to marry someone familiar, so when she saw Sato, she just went for it. She apologizes to him, because she had just made him their hero. Meanwhile, the maids outside gossip about Sato coming from another world and becoming the Ring King. The people ask for an audience to see their new king. The wedding was meant to form an alliance between the Kingdom of Light and the Empire, and the common people think that the Emperor would be furious if he found out what happened. The prince says it's up to the Maiden of the Rings of Light to choose who is going to become the Ring King and save the world. And they were just following the tradition, so the Emperor's plans have nothing to do with it. Hime's grandpa, who is actually a sage, stops their bantering and asks them to leave, because there's more people who want to see the king. They walk outside and there are hundreds of people on the patio. The sage presents to them the defeater of the abyss, bringer of light to Arnulus, the Ring King. The people have been waiting a long time for the return of the Ring King, and Sato is now their greatest hope. He looks at the people and screams that he is the one who came from another world to save them. He is their new king and new hero. At night, he is taking a bath, thinking he may have gotten too excited, when suddenly Hime walks in completely naked. They are both embarrassed, and Hime says she had to go there because she didn't have a choice since they're technically newlyweds. She tells Sato to not look at her and throws a bucket at him. They sit next to each other and Hime apologizes, because she knew about everything that would happen after she gave him the ring. That had nothing to do with him, but she dragged him into it anyway. He says things will be fine, because this is their summer break, and he's the ring king, the one chosen by the Maiden of Light herself. Since that was Hime's world and she needed to be there, Sato will stay there too. The monsters were after her and the ring, and only Sato could protect her now so he's going to stay by her side. She remembers a time when they were kids and other girls would pick at her, and Sato was always there to protect her. He has always been her hero after all. He catches Sato looking at her goods and tells him their marriage was only for convenience, and she only chose him by impulse, so he doesn't need to take it seriously. Sato says he's happy she chose him, and she asks if he really likes her. He says yes, he likes her as a dear friend, but it is clear that both of them know there's more to it than they care to admit. The bell rings alarmingly, and Sato jumps up, accidentally letting Hime see his goods. But they don't have time to get embarrassed, because monsters are attacking the castle, going after the Ring King. They run toward the soldiers with their clothes all messy, and the guards think they were interrupting something. One guard says there are several monsters from the abyss attacking the castle, and asks for his help. Sato doesn't know how to fight, but as long as he has that ring, the people need him to. He accepts the task and picks up an axe, which he barely can hold. The sage says the ring grants him strength and bestows the light of purification upon whatever he holds. The axe starts glowing and becomes a perfect weapon to fight the abyss. Sato doesn't know much about the world, just that it means a lot to Hime, and that's enough reason for him to fight. Hime kisses him again and he gets ready for battle. Well, that was the first episode of Tales of Wedding Rings, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, hit the notification bell so you won't miss anything new. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye!